All right, I'm just gonna show you three smart home freezer uh, projects. So recently the uh, thermostat in my freezer died and I'm gonna show you how to temporarily uh, use your smart home to make your freezer work without a working thermostat. Two, to add security or alerts in the way of a temperature or leak sensor contact sensor on the freezer door to uh, light up the freezer room because this freezer doesn't have a light in it so you can see inside it when you come in at night my uh, freezer died the other day and unfortunately we didn't realize uh, until it was too late and ruined uh, three or four hundred dollars worth of food and it left a big mess but today I'm going to show you um, a temporary fix I had after I found out it was the thermostat. So in my case, I thought the first thing to check was the thermostat. And it turns out it was the thermostat. And of course, all the thermostat does is, um, well, there might be some PID type intelligence in it, but I doubt it. But all the thermostat does is, you know, check the temperature and turn the freezer off or on. So if it's getting starting to get... Uh, uh, too warm it turns the freezer on and if it's getting too cold it turns the freezer off and the setting should be around minus 18 degrees is what it is so while we're fighting with the um, the retailer and the manufacturer to get because it was only six months old to get it uh, replaced or repaired I thought I'd come up with my own temporary thermostat solution using my uh, smart things controller so you can see in here, it's not great, but basically that's the thermostat, the back of the thermostat. And I disconnected it. Thermostat acts as a switch. I disconnected the two wires from the switch and shorted them together. And a little disclaimer here is that uh, you shouldn't try this at home unless you're a professional. You could uh, damage the equipment further or uh, more seriously, you could get injured. So what I first did was shorted out the switch and then I put in a uh, smart plug, a Z-Wave plug, and that's what powers a freezer. So right now with this plugged in and the switch shorted out, the freezer is always on if the, you know, the smart plug is on. Um, but of course, with smart things, I can control that plug. So then I added a um, leak sensor. So the smart things leak sensor has a built-in temperature sensor as well. And then I just set up a simple, uh, it was two automations, one to turn it off and one to turn it on when it got to a certain temperature. And I set the temperature swing, so it's supposed to be minus 18, it seems typical. And I set the temperature swing from uh, minus 17 to minus 20. So it, uh, it swings between those two temperatures and there's a bit of momentum when it's going one way or the other. And it seems to take about uh, 20 minutes to a half hour in between off ons, but it keeps it that basically between minus 20 and minus uh, 17. And that was relatively straightforward and I'll show you the program for that. Just plus, we want to add automation. And let's start with the um, condition. So device status, so freezer. So we want, I got two temperature sensors. So let's pick the, uh, the first one temperature so if it's equal to or above let's go minus 17 done save then we want to turn the freezer on so let's go control devices and again find my room freezer next and what we want to do is turn it on and you could delay it but we won't do that. So I'll save and done. Okay, so now that half is done. So that's gonna turn the freezer on when it gets above minus 17. So now let's go make a routine. So we wanna add another automation. That turns off the freezer when it gets below minus 20, say. And we want to go equal to or below and let's go minus 20 
save. And it just gives it a name. Okay, and now we're done. So now when the um, freezer goes above uh, minus 17, starts to warm up, the, uh, the, app, the automation to turn on the plug and it's going to turn on the freezer. And when the, um, it does the opposite, when it goes below minus, uh, getting too cold, below minus 20, it's going to turn the freezer off. And it's acting like a thermostat. Uh, a couple interesting facts about the uh, leak sensors, which have the built-in temperature sensor. So they're um, rated to only minus 20 C, but it actually kept working all the way to minus 32 if I uh, left the freezer on. It went down to minus 32, so that was interesting. The, the cold uh, temperature does affect battery life. Um, basically, the cold, like minus 18, it's, um, it actually increases the life, but reduces the capacity. So that just means it's going to be operating, you know, not enough juice, uh, but it just seemed to work fine in this application. And I've had it here running for uh, a number of days now, and I'll show you the logs in a minute. All right, I just wanted to show you the log here of the freezer temperature. And you can see here, uh, basically it's keeping it between uh, minus 16 and uh, 20 degrees. So that's working out just like we wanted. And then you could go look at the log for the free power to the freezer. And you can see it's on and off there about every uh, half hour or 40 minutes. Anyway, that's basically acting like a thermostat. Another cool part was using the, um, the leak sensor. Uh, to send notifications. So it's pretty straightforward to set notifications and I'll show you that in a minute. But I added a little extra feature. So this has a leak sensor uh, or a temperature built into it so it's easy enough to send a notification I guess if it gets below uh, minus 25 that's too cold or something wrong or if it gets above uh, maybe minus 15 that's uh, too warm so it would send you a notification and then you would save the hassle that I had. Um, but also as a little extra feature, I had this idea. Where you just take a little tub and you keep the leak sensor in that and you stick an ice cube in there. And if that is kind of a, an extra notification, if that ice cube ever melts, of course there's a problem and the leak sensor will be wet and you can get a leak uh, notification. So now let's set the, uh, the notifications for the uh, leak sensor to tell us when it's getting too cold or uh, too warm. Let's do the same, but this time well, if it's getting too cold. All right, so those are the two notifications if it gets too cold or too hot, but as you saw, I've put an ice cube in there, so we'll know if that ice cube melts, it'll get the leak sensor wet. So let's put a notification in for that. Leak sensor, but this time we're going to pick water sensor instead of, and we want to know when it's wet. And that's it. Okay, and that's it. Well, the freezer itself doesn't have a uh, light in it. So what I did was I um, put a contact sensor on the side of the freezer door and I have a smart light switch. This is one of these uh, mechanical ones. And of course there's the, uh, the lights in here, a couple pot lights. And I've set automation, I mean I bypass that now, but I've set automation so when the uh, freezer door open the light uh, comes on and I bypassed the uh, nighttime thing so I've set a nighttime thing as well but I had to bypass that to demonstrate it here but basically when it's uh, dark out if you come into this room and open the freezer the light comes on so that you can see in the freezer because the light the freezer doesn't have its own light and let's just do it right now all right the light comes on and that's one of those mechanical ones and when I close the freezer The light goes off and I'll just do it again but this time I'll just show you how the mechanical ones work in case you're interested all right and there we go that's it